Hey y'all, this is Coasters and Travels, and this is my review on Pipeline the Surf Coaster. Pipeline is the latest coaster located at SeaWorld Orlando and is the world's first surf coaster. Manufactured by BM, this surf coaster is the newest generation of stand up coasters. What makes this stand out from the past stand up coasters is the restraint design. The restraints move two inches up and down from its original position while the ride is in motion, providing much better comfort throughout the ride's elements. This is a huge improvement from the past stand up coasters, which stays locked in place throughout the entire ride. While walking to the park, you can see the ride in most of its glory. Pipeline is located between the Bayside Stadium and Ports of Call. To get there, you pass the main entrance and take a sharp right. The area is themed to a beach with sand dunes, surfboard, and beach music. As you walk under the Hammerhead Turn, you can view riders leaving the station right before they embark on their launch. With most coasters at SeaWorld, you're able to view only parts of the ride while on the walkway. This is one of the few rides I've seen where the entire coaster interacts with the walking path. This results in a lot of good picture taking spots throughout the area. The queue itself is no more than your basic switchbacks, a pattern I'm noticing with the latest coasters. There's not much theming in the queue, but all is forgiven when the area itself is nicely themed. There is a cool water feature after the hammerhead which looks nice when the coaster goes through it. The trains look amazing with the surfboard design and colors as well as the ocean blue track. Pipeline has a length of 2,950 feet, a max height of 110 feet, a max speed of 60 miles per hour, and one inversion. This ride also has five airtime moments. You heard right. This stand-up coaster is the first to incorporate airtime in its design and it's very strange when you first experience it. When you hit those airtime moments, your feet lift off the floor. This was something I was not ready for, but strangely enough, it totally works. Because the restraints move with you, there's no discomfort at all. Granted, you're riding the coaster properly. To get on the train, you must push down the seat to your height level, then pull down your restraints. The restraints themselves are the vest restraints you see in other B&M coasters. Unlike other stand-up coasters, you have to stand upright to lock the initial position. There are those that say to bend your knees a bit, like in other stand-up coasters, but in my opinion, that's not necessary. Also, do not sit on the seat while the ride is in motion. Trust me, it won't feel good when you hit those airtime hills. Take it from someone who rode this back to back, sometimes without even leaving the station. Which brings me to another point. This coaster is very rewritable. The layout has more drawn out elements than your typical B&M layout with tighter turns. It makes transitioning from element to element more fluid, which works for this coaster model. As far as the best seat, front row wins. You feel the wind in your face during the lunch and you get great pops of air on those hills. Back row is second best and while the front row gets that initial air at the beginning of the hill, you get flung exiting the hill on the back row. If you're enjoying this review, make sure to give it a like. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for more videos like this. Now back to the review. With all of the good things about Pipeline, there are a couple of cons. Earlier I said this coaster is rewritable, but it also depends on your leg strength. Even though the G-forces aren't as bad as, say, Green Lantern at Six Flags Great Adventure, you will feel the weight on your legs when going through those helixes. Another con is the smoothness. While the front row is smooth and arguably the best seat on the ride, the back row is a bit shaky. It's not rough per se, but it's a lot more bumpy back there. A big con is the lack of shade throughout the area. There was barely any shade in the area, and especially at the break run where you're waiting on the train ahead of you to dispatch. Hopefully they're at more shading because the entire area needs more of it. Another con is the vest restraints. I personally didn't have any issues with them, but I can see them being a problem for other people. There was a lot of complaints of the restraints cutting on their shoulders or tightening up on them, but I guess it depends on your body type and height. At the end of the day, SeaWorld knocked it out of the park. There were many skeptical people, including myself, that thought this was a mistake. I'm proud to say that I've been proven wrong. Not only this is a great addition to SeaWorld Orlando, but the beginning of a new generation of stand-up coasters. For being a prototype, Pipeline was well designed and it definitely brings something unique to Orlando. I hope to see this model at more parks, which by then I hope they work out the kinks. Overall, I give this coaster a final ranking of 4 out of 5 stars. Thanks for watching.